Forget everything you know about BMW. Forget the Roundel, the Hoff Mr. Kink, the Twinkid Negril, and Hans stuck taking flight in a CSL Batmobile at the Nürburgring in 1974. Pretend that the 2002T was never a thing, that M5 was only Dr. Richard Daystrom's murderous multitronic computer on Star Trek, and that yuppies drove Buicks. Wipe your mind clean. Okay. Now let's approach the 2018 BMW 640i X-Drive Gran Turismo with fresh eyes and glistening objectivity. Highs immensely useful, immense interior, immensely refined. Lows immense price, immensely stupid name, immense. It doesn't look wonderful, but otherwise it kinda, sort of is mostly wonderful. And there's nothing else quite like it. Big boned first of all, it's big. With its 200.9 inch length, 120.9 inch wheelbase, and 74.9 inch width, the 640i GT is about the same size as a Dodge Charger. But it's taller than that brawny sedan and features a liftgate that opens to reveal a generous 31 cubic feet of cargo space behind the second row seats. The Charger's trunk, by contrast, has room for only 17 cubic feet of flotsam. Volvo's V90 station wagon has 26 cubes behind its second row, and the XC60 crossover offers only 30. But even those numbers understate the 640i GT's usefulness. The rear hatch opening is huge and extends down to the bumper, and the aluminium liftgate opens without struts impeding access from the sides. The space back there isn't just generous but also flat, so things slide in easily and it's deep enough that many bulkier items fit in without having to remove the cargo cover. Plus, the rear seats fold down to increase total cargo capacity to a vast 65 cubic feet. The 640i GT isn't a station wagon and it isn't a crossover, but it may be smarter than either of those things. Inside addition for all its utility, the 640i GT isn't a UPS truck. The interior is straightforward. Conservative in design, sweetly detailed, and very accommodating. Not just for the people in front, the rear seat passengers are treated royally, too. There's plenty of legroom in back, the seats are well shaped, the cushion is raised slightly, theatre style, and thanks to a generously tall greenhouse, the car feels airy and pleasant. It would be weird if it were airy but unpleasant. And the front seats are even better. Except for the goofy electronic wand-like shifter, the entire interior is well conceived. The leather quality is Hermes or better, the switches all work with precision, and the only nicer wood trim is on 17th century French furniture. For vehicles beyond the $50,000 threshold, it's tiresome to list all the electronic features, all such conveyances are loaded with gizmos and carry the full complement of modern safety gear. What matters more is how the driver and the techie stuff interact. In front of the driver, the 640i GT has a digital screen that mimics analog gauges, with needles that sweep across a large speedometer and tachometer and smaller fuel and temperature gauges off to the side. It's easy to read behind the thick, leather-wrapped steering wheel. Most of the other functions are displayed on a single, brilliantly clear 10.3-inch screen that's controlled three ways. First, there's the traditional rotary eye drive knob alongside the shifter. Second are gesture controls that consist of waving one's hand in particular ways in front of the screen. And third, as a touchscreen. In an age of quicker responding, intuitively programmed touchscreens, the eye drive knob feels like a throwback to 2010, and the gesture controls lack tactile feedback. The war is over, and touchscreens seem to have one. But why is Apple CarPlay compatibility a $300 option on this car? Best Buy sells entire Sony touchscreen head units with CarPlay for only $350. Wearing 24545R19BYLEP0R SC run flat tires on 19 inch wheels and boasting the $1,200 million sport package. The big 640i GT looks grounded and serious. It's not pretty, but it has a robust presence that isn't SUV or wagony. And despite the standard X-Drive all-wheel drive, it's not ready for off-road adventures, either. 
It's a bit awkward in its proportions, but it doesn't call attention to itself. It blends in. Sweet six none of it matters the moment the engine starts. Well, it doesn't really start as much as it slyly pours into a soothing idle. Displacing only 3.0 liters but forced by a turbocharger and burning fuel sprayed directly into the six cylinders and mixed with their entering past the variably timed valves, this inline engine is spectacularly and spectacular. It's rated at a deceptively modest 335 horsepower, and thanks to all that technology and a long 94.6 mm piston stroke, it produces a silken ribbon of 332 lbft of torque between a ridiculously low 1380 and 5200 revolutions per minute. Combine that wide torque plateau with the perfect behavior of the 8-speed automatic transmission and the result is great acceleration that occurs in near silence. The 4,548 pound 640 IGT's drip from 0 to 60 miles per hour takes only 4.7 seconds, and the quarter mile is consumed in 13.4 seconds at 105 miles per hour thanks to our wheel drive. Wheel spin isn't an issue, and anyone who can find the accelerator pedal can likely duplicate those times provided they're willing to wind out the engine to its 7,000 revolutions per minute red line as we did. But it's the engine's manners in daily use that are most satisfying. From just off idle at part throttle, the power comes on as if it were emerging from a steady matter-antimatter reaction going on under the hood. The transmission, like virtually all modern automatics, is programmed to keep engine speeds down. And driven at part throttle in normal traffic, the 640 IGT will rarely rev past 2000 revolutions per minute for any prolonged period of time. Fortunately, there's so much juicy torque on hand that the car never feels anything except athletic. The transmission can be shifted manually using paddles behind the steering wheel, but this isn't a car for slaughtering weekend slalom records. The test car was equipped with the $4,100 dynamic handling package that includes active steering, an adaptive air spring suspension with adaptive dampers, and dynamic anti-roll bars. What it amounts to is a car that remains flat during cornering and utterly serene during cruising. And it's freakishly quiet. The earth could open up beneath the 640 IGT and the driver wouldn't know about it until the car fell into the abyss. All that suspension tech pays off in a 0.90 grams skid pad performance and almost no nose dive under braking. With a 160 foot stop from 70 miles per hour, it brakes well, too. There's nothing about this beefy machine that screams high performance, but it performs. Bima time now, finally, let's put this machine in the context of the BMW brand's history and heritage. First. The 640i Gran Turismo represents a quantum improvement over the car it replaces, the 5 Series Gran Turismo. Whereas that beast looked awkward from every angle, the 6 Series version is awkward only from some angles. The new car is a much better realization of what turns out to be a good idea. BMW's naming scheme has become a muddled, incoherent mess. The 640i Gran Turismo has nothing to do with previous 6 Series coupes dating back to 1976. And it's not that close in concept to the low-roofed Fords or 6 Series Gran Coupe that BMW has sold since 2012. Also, BMW should get rid of the word Gran before they start putting half vinyl roofs and carriage lights on their cars. Internally, the 6 Series Gran Turismo is known as the G32 and it shares most of its fundamental engineering with the 5 and 7 series sedans. There's a lot of aluminium used in their structures, but all these machines are seriously heavy. And as far as practicality goes, the 6 series Gran Turismo is clearly superior to both the 5 series and the 7 series. All the 6 series Gran Turismos that BMW sends to the United States are 640i models with the turbocharged and Inzix and X-Drive Val wheel drive. It's a sweet package, but it means the base price for the German-made 640i X-Drive Gran Turismo is up at $71,195. Meanwhile, BMW's America-assembled X5 SUV starts at $58,195 and, 
while all BMWs exist at lofty price points, $13,000 is still a lot of money. For many people, the 640i GT would be a better choice, but most buyers will look at the price difference and take the SUV. That's a shame.